This is Regis Algebra 2, Lesson 7A, Homework Corrections. So I've listed what we're going to go over together. The first one I'm going to explain very carefully, and the others I will just write them down and let you find your mistakes. So we're only looking here at the first term. And I'm asking myself, what do I need to multiply 3a by to get 6a squared? And so the answer would be 2a. Now, when I go back, I've got to multiply both terms. So this will go 6a squared plus 4ab. And then, because these are the same signs, I'm going to have to subtract. <coughs> So 6a minus 6a squared minus 6a squared will cancel out, which is what you need to happen. If it doesn't happen, you've done something wrong. So 13 minus 4 leaves me with 9ab, and I bring down my plus 6b squared. This should look just like long division. Now I'm asking myself, what do I multiply 3a by to get 9ab? And the answer is 3b. So when I multiply back, I get 9ab for the first term plus 6b squared for the second term, subtracting, and I get 0. So this is my answer. Now I'm going to not go at, through the explanation for each of these, but I'm going to write down the other ones and only explain when I think it's needful. Now 3 is tricky because this is the problem. But I need to write this in a better order to be able to do this. <clears throat> Since it begins with the A here, I'm going to rewrite write it in descending order of A terms. So I'm going to write this as A squared M to the fourth, and that, that's my squared term. Then I want my A term minus 4A M to the third plus 3 m squared plus because there's no negative sign in front of this. And that's what I will divide by a m minus 1. So let's do that on the next column. <coughs> so once you do that, it starts looking much more familiar to you. As you get down to the next step, these will cancel out. You get negative 4 plus 1 or negative 3 a m cubed, and I'll continue. And paying attention here, of course, I'm distributing my negative sign, So, because you always subtract just as in regular division. So minus 3 plus 3, those will drop out, plus 3 minus 3, those will drop out. And so this is your answer. So the trick to that problem was making sure that you reorder first. The trick to number 8 is to make sure that I introduce a, a placeholder for every term in between. So let me show you how that's done. And of course, all this was <coughs> excuse me, explained on the previous page. But you cannot do this long division without putting in my placeholders. Notice what's happening. My x terms go from x to the fourth to x to the third to x squared to x. And my y terms go from none to y to y squared to y cubed to y to the fourth. So I'm as one variable descends, the other variable ascends. And now it becomes an easier task. I would go x cubed, and then I'll finish it out for you. Notice how with each step, my variables and their exponents is always lining up. Uh, if, if they're not, something's wrong. Okay, so for this time... Here we'll have 0 minus, so we'll have a negative xy cubed, bring down the final term, y to the fourth. My multiplier in this case, I've got the x, but I need minus y cubed. Multiplying back, I get minus xy cubed and minus y to the fourth. Or is it, let's see, a negative times a positive. Um, and finally, when I have 1 plus 1, I will get 2, y to the 4th, and that's my remainder. So I would add that up to y to the 4th and put that, because it's the remainder, just like you used to do in long division, 
sorry, that's supposed to be a four, um, you put it over the divisor. And that's your answer. Okay. Now I'm going to start writing these problems smaller now so that we can go ahead and save some space here. Nine, once you learned how to do eight, is just the very same, and it has no remainder, so that's pretty straightforward. And in addition, the next one will also be straightforward, and I'll write that one down. Now this is just longer but you're filling in all those place values and you make sure you have your negative sign in your divisor and as your last term in the dividend. And now I'll go ahead and write in the answers. And so you see that again, once you have uh, figured out to put in your place values, uh, it works out very smoothly, even if it's a little laborious. And make sure that you're always being very careful with your signs, and there should be no problem with that. So on the next page, we'll move on to 1.7g. Now here we're going to do synthetic division, and what we need to notice is that things are misordered. We still have to order them in descending order when we pick up these. Now we also um, care, remember, that... If it's a negative here, we just pick up the value. So we're going to do, if this is positive here, we're going to pick up a negative 2 as our divider. Okay, so those are my two things I could go wrong. The v squared, or the v cubed term is that. The v squared term is that. The v term is minus 12. And the constant is that. And as long as we've got that, we should be able to do this fine here. So we're going to drop down the first one. We're going to multiply back minus 10. We're going to sum them. Minus 10 plus 3 is minus 7. We're going to multiply back positive 14. We're going to sum them. 14 minus 12 is 2. We're going to multiply back minus 4. And this last one, as we sum it, will be my remainder. So all I have to do now is put in my variable. It's going to be one less than the one I started with. I started with v cubed, so this will be v squared minus 7v plus 2. And that's all there is to it. So the ordering is very, very important, as you can see in these. Let me go ahead and do some more for you. Now I'm saving just a little bit of time. This is number four, but I'm saving a little time by not writing the problem down. Notice when I'm picking up my divisor, though, I'm sorry, you know what, that was number five. Um, I don't need to do number five. Let me pause and redo that. Okay, now I've got number four up here. If you look at the original problem in the book on page 30, notice I'm dividing by y minus 3. I always take the opposite sign. So rather than a negative 3, I'm going to put positive 3 there. Notice my y to the fourth term has a 1. My this, These are out of order. So I have to go back and find the order. y cubed term is negative 4. y squared term is positive 3. y term is positive 8 and my constant is negative 24. And now we should be fine. We'll drop down the first one, we multiply back, we sum. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, we multiply. Negative 3, we add, we get 0. We multiply, we add, see what we're doing? And then we add here, and that's my remainder. So now all I have to do is pick up my term. Uh, my first term in the problem, in the dividend, is y to the fourth. So this would start with y to the third minus 1y squared plus 0y plus 8. And of course I could clean that up a little bit. y to the third minus y squared. I can leave off that, and I can leave off my 1s as multipliers plus 8, and that's a little neater form. All right, let's go ahead and do another one again. Okay, again, for number 6, I'm not writing the problem down, but if you look at it, it's divided by m plus 2, so I'll take the opposite sign over here for my div uh, divisor, and then I have an m to the 5th term, so it's it just says m to the 5th with no uh, constant in front of it, so I'll put a 1 there. I have no terms for the 4th 
m to the third, m to the second, but I do have an m term and a constant. So as long as I set it up right, the rest of it is really straightforward. Drop down my 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, Okay, 16 minus 19 is minus 3. Okay, when I'm adding it, and negative times negative is positive 6, and add, and that's my remainder. So again, now I'll go ahead and write it in. I started with an m to the 5th, so I need to drop down 1. m to the 4th minus 2, m to the 3rd plus 4, m squared minus 8, m minus 3. And that's all there is to it. So after seeing those, that many, I would advise you try to do 7, 8, 9 on your own and then only come back to correct them if you need to. I'm going to just write them out quickly. I think we've explained pretty much everything we care to here. So that uh, finishes out then section 1.7G, and you see, of course, that the trick to the whole thing is the setting up of those numbers in the right order. Now let's go to 1.8 and do some corrections with you. Okay, for this one here, we're going to be taking our number to the right, we're going to be taking our variable to the left. We could um, do each side first, or we could do the moving first and then do the sides. Let me just do it that way, because sometimes that works out nicer. Minus 3 fourths S minus 3 fourths S okay. equals, I've got a negative 5 already over here, and as I move this 5 over, I'm going to have another minus 5. Now I'll gather my like terms. Uh, 3 fourths and 3 fourths, same signs, so that'll be 6 fourths or 1 and a half. So what is 4 minus 1 and a half? That'd be 2 and a half. I, I really do prefer to work with uh, um, improper, so let me do it this way. Okay, I'm going to, well, I'll do it in two steps here. Minus 6 fourths S equals negative 10. I'm going to convert this then to 4 so that I can combine them. So this would be 16 fourths s minus 6 fourths s equals negative 10. I think this is probably the most straightforward way to do it. And 16 minus 6 is 10 fourths s equals negative 10. I won't do my simplification yet. I'll just go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal on the other side times 4 tenths. And look how convenient that is. Recall that the whole number always goes with the numerator. I could write it that way. I, could, uh, I would have maybe written it like this times 4 over 10. Okay, either way, um, these will cancel out, and I'm going to get s equals negative 4. And that's the way you solve that. So again, um, the trick to this problem is probably mostly in the um, dealing with the fractions. Don't be afraid of those fractions. Go ahead and work them out. Number 16, you will have fractions on your on your test. So go ahead and uh, and plug through those. Okay, so there's a couple of tricks here that we're looking at this one. I'm, I could either write this out as two binomials, or I could remember the pattern either way, and I'm going to do the distribution there. So I'll do that step next. Now doing a little bit of analysis, I see that I have the very same thing on both sides. So I, it'd be like I'd subtract it from the right side and move it to the left, and they cancel out, so I don't even have to do that step. Okay, I'm going to move this this way and this this way. So I get negative 20x, opposite of negative 8x as I'm moving it is plus 8x. I'm going to have 61 on the right, and the opposite as I'm moving it of positive 25 is 
subtract 25. Now let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Negative 20 plus 8 is negative 12x. And 61, let's see, that would be uh, 36. Okay, positive. And divide by a negative number will give me a negative. 36 divided by 12 is 3. Now this is not as tricky as some of the last two. So we see we have a distribution here and really nothing else tricky about it. So I would suggest if you miss this one that you go back and see if you can find your error first and then follow with me to see that you did it correct. So hopefully you've been following along all this time. Nothing really tricky about it. At my last step, I'll divide by negative. So negative divided by negative is positive and leave it as this is 5 halves. Just go ahead and leave it as that improper fraction. That's a 5 halves. Make it almost too small for me. All right. Again, number 21, there's not much of a trick to it. We have a distribution, distribution. I would suggest you watch your signs very carefully. Go ahead and see if you can find your mistake on your own and come back to see my answer. So again, I think signs would be your most challenging part. Notice how many steps I'm choosing to write. And that's how I want your problems to look as you're working them for me. Please show me every step. So that was number 21. Here's 22. I always step back after I've copied a problem down. Whoops, copied it correctly here. And I make my plan of attack. So my plan of attack here, I should have paused it for that, sorry, uh, is that I see that I could eliminate these parentheses and these parentheses right away. They're not doing anything for me. I have a plus sign in front of them, so I don't need to worry about changing anything. I'll just get rid of them. It seems almost like a superfluous step, and if you were very good in your algebra, you really wouldn't have to make it as a second step. Step, but I think it's wise to go ahead and do so. So after that point, you'll gather your R's on your left side, you'll gather your uh, constants on your right side, and then you'll do some switching back and forth across the equal sign. Go ahead and try to do it on your own and look to me for the answer. Now this looks intimidating, but go ahead and work it out the same way. We're going to go ahead and multiply here. We're going to distribute there and we're going to get one-half x. An x times a negative will be minus one-half x. Look how nicely that worked out for me, because that, of course, will cancel out. We're going to get x squared minus 5x plus 10. Okay, so now we're going to... Uh, oh, you know what? I copied the problem wrong. I thought that was looking a little odd for you. Hang on one second. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is my distribution right here. Now, don't get too panicky about it. Go ahead and work it through step by step. One half x, distribute it, x squared minus one half x, distribute on the right side, x squared minus five x plus 10. Now, watch what happens. The one half minus one half drops out. Very nice for me. The x squared on the left and the right side drop out because if you have the same thing on both sides of the equation, and look what I have on my left side, I have zero, negative five x plus 10. Now this looks like something very simple. I'll move that over. I get five x equals 10, and I'll divide and x equals 2. And so my suggestion to you is it's very common for a student to get panicky when something looks like a mess. But if you just plug through it step by step, you'll find it's very satisfying to see that you yourself can do these problems. Okay. Okay, they're getting a little messier. Now, the first thing I'd say is a penmanship issue. If you have any numbers that tend to look like other numbers or 
letters or whatever, my Z's and my twos sometimes get confused to me, so I make a distinction. I put a little flag through my Z. So you must always make sure you can clearly read everything in your own penmanship or, or fix it. Okay, this is a squaring, so I could write it out as a binomial, or I could remember my pattern. Okay, and I'm going to have to do that square before I can distribute my two. So this becomes z squared. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Plus two z twice. Four z. Plus two times two is four. The second grouping becomes z squared minus 3z twice plus 9 equals, I'm going to distribute a 2, okay, I'll just go ahead and do this in two steps, it's probably safer, I get z squared plus 4z twice plus 16, and now on my next term I'm going to have to distribute that, and I'll go ahead and gather things here. I'm going to have some z squared terms, some z terms, and some constants to gather. z squared plus z squared is 2z squared. 4z um, plus or minus 6z is minus 2z. And plus 4 plus 9 is plus 13. On this side, I'll go ahead and distribute. I'll get 2z squared plus 16z. <coughs> plus 32 minus 1. Notice what I've got on my next line is I've got a 2z squared on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to have negative 2z squared plus 13 equals, and I'll gather these together, 16z, 32 minus 1 is plus 31. Now my numbers will go to my right, my variables to my left. I've got negative 2z. I'm, I'm writing it out for you. Um, don't be afraid of writing an extra step. It's, it's really sometimes so much more efficient in the long run because you're more accurate. Okay, minus 2 minus 16 is minus 18z. 31 minus 13, I'll have to take the difference. 1 minus 3 is... Um, <laughs> had to think a minute, and 2 minus 1, there we go, divide by a negative, and uh, this would be a negative on this side, and 18 divided by 18 is 1. Now at this point, they're really not doing anything new, they're just trying to make it look scary, because they're making it longer and longer. You'll have a distribution there, you'll have a foil there, and um, that's all I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to copy everything else, minus 24 plus d squared, minus 65. I'll go ahead and distribute minus 3d plus 6. On the right side, I'm going to, you could write it out, d plus 3 times d plus 3, or you could remember it's d squared plus 3d twice is plus 6d plus 9. Okay, notice I have a d squared term on the left and the right. They drop out. I'm going to gather my d terms. I'm going to gather one, two, three numbers together. So 5d minus 3d is 2d. I've got a negative, a negative, and a positive. So let's sum my negatives here, and that would be minus 89 plus 6. I'll go ahead and do it in another step. 6d plus ooh, 9. I'll go ahead and sum those. 2d minus a negative plus 6. Okay, so we're going to take the difference. Minus 83 equals 6d plus 9. Be patient with yourself. Just go ahead and write your steps. That will go to the left. 2d minus 6d. This will go to the right. 9 plus 83, okay. uh, that would be minus 4d, <coughs> that would be um, equals uh, 9 plus, let's see, that would be uh, 92, okay, and divide, 
and I'm going to get a negative. 4 goes into 9 2 times, 4 goes into 12 3 times, and my answer should be, let's see, d equals negative 23. I'm not checking these for you, but I would say if you're coming out with fairly reasonable answers, you probably don't need to take the time to check everything. Okay, I'll go up to the next, top of the next page and copy a new problem. I'll tell you what, I'm getting pretty worn out, and um, we only have a few left, but our timing is getting pretty long, so I'm going to say 28, 30, 33, and 34. I'm going to look at them a minute. Um, <laughs> that's obnoxious. Okay, I'd say 28 is an obnoxious problem. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to do that. 30. 30 is not quite as obnoxious, but I'll tell you what, it's getting pretty complicated. I'll tell you what, let me go, just go ahead and do these word problems for you. Well, they're not word problems, but 33, those, those two are very complicated. I'm not going to give you something that complicated, even though um, this one's really complicated. This one's okay, but it's a little obnoxious. So let's go 4x plus 4 equals 8x plus 4.5. Now let me work this out for you. This is a little more complicated too. First thing I'm going to do is multiply the other side by the reciprocal, which would be 4. Keep your absolute value sign here. I'm going to distribute a 4 here, and I'm going to get 32x plus, oh, let's see, 2 times that is 9, and f so 4 times that would be 18, okay, <clears throat> and then what I've got to do now is go ahead and I've got, I've isolated this, so now I have to make it into two equations, okay, the first equation reads just like I see it without the absolute value sign, The second equation reads just like I see it without the absolute value sign on the left side, but everything on the right side is going to be distributed by negative 1. So this will be minus, I'm running out of room here, 32x minus 18. So let me go ahead and solve this. Now technically when I solve this, this comes out with two answers. So x equals negative one-half or negative eleven-eighteenths. The problem is, and uh, with absolute value, you always need to check your answers. When I plug it back in, this one works, but this one does not. Sometimes algebra, and I'll be showing you later some of the reasons why this is so, but if you plug that back in, that actually does not produce a correct solution. So you do have to be tricky sometimes, and I have not laid much emphasis on that. Um, for, let's see, the last one you need to do is 34. Wrap this up. The method trick is to make sure your, your absolute value is isolated on the left-hand side. So I do need to deal with that first. This will be 2x minus 3. Um, this will be 2x plus 2 over 2 over a monomial, so I'll have to divide each term in the numerator. This will be 2x minus 3 equals x plus 1. And now I have to do two equations. So I'll pick it up at the end of this, try to see if you could at least do that far yourself. So in this last problem, I get two answers, x equals 4 or x, oops, <laughs> or x equals 4 or x equals negative two-thirds. I can go ahead and write that a little neater. Uh, not negative, I'm sorry. Two-thirds and four. Okay, and that's a better written answer.